plenty of body roll, a little bit of squeal. Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today I'm very excited to share with you in collaboration with the Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, this 1975 BMW 520i. It has 13,500 kilometers on it. It's a European market car, and 1975 was a special year for BMW because 1975 is when BMW opened its first dealership in the United States. That wasn't a thing. If you wanted a BMW prior to that, you had to go to Hoffman or someone who was kind of like, finding these cars for you. There's a lot of gray market cars as well. But at the time, I think you could really only get like a 3 Series or what was the 3 Series and a 2002 Ti. I don't know if there was much else on the market. Could you get a 3.0? I don't know. But you definitely could not get this. This is an E12 5 Series and it has an M10 four-cylinder engine and it is quintessentially BMW. There's a lot of quirky things about this car and it looks gorgeous in one of the German rainbow colors. This is Polaris silver. It has the Euro bumpers as well. I love the look and it has these great little wipers for the headlights and it's such a clever design because it just goes back and forth like that and it gets everything done. Now, the other thing about this car is it has the correct size kidney grill. So if you are looking at new BMWs, you probably look at this and think, wow, that looks good. The seating position, it is relatively high, but when we get in here, it's just wonderful. So we've got a nice thin steering wheel. We've got a four speed manual gearbox in the typical reverse. And because it was a European market car, everything is in German. So we have Blinker, Nebel, Brems, Louding, I don't know what that is. Fernal? Fernal? I don't know. I'm not going to try that. Even the lights, Licht. And it's pretty simple in here. You've got seats, no sunroof, a beautiful headliner, and it's incredible the condition that this car is in. It clearly never saw the sunlight because there's no indications of any cracking on this dashboard. And, of course, nice big glove box as well. Easily, the strangest thing about this car, though, that for, for me, is that there's no buckle. You get to the seatbelt, and there is absolutely no seatbelt buckle. So how are you to fasten your seatbelt? Well, check this out. You come down to the center, you slip it in here, and there you go. There's your seatbelt. To release, you press, pops up, and off it goes. Under the hood's pretty interesting. I miss these old-style BMW hoods because they were beautiful. But first, pull that forward. And we lean you up. Isn't that great? And pretty familiar sight here. Although this is just the most adorable little cooling system with a very open fan. So watch your fingers if you're near the car while it's running. On the passenger side, nice big BMW logo on the valve cover. Beautiful stuff. Let's go for a ride. The door handle is actually kind of strange as well because it just comes in right here. Here's a key I have never seen before. Kind of into it. Not exactly a raucous roar from this four cylinder, but it does the job. There's that bassy low tone that's so familiar to BMWs. And it, it I think it's still there a little bit, but basically up through the 2000s, that sound, that signature BMW sound was always there and you still definitely get it in this. And it feels pretty appropriate that we're pulling away from an office park in a silver BMW. I feel like that's still the, the norm today. We'll say goodbye. Cute little horn. Well, in the true spirit of a BMW sedan, let's jump on the highway. You'd probably end up driving this to work every day, doing like a normal commute. I feel like this has got to be it. Plenty of body roll, a little bit of squeal <laughs> from these little tires. While it does have torque low down, it's still a very small amount of torque. So we're cruising around in top gear, fourth gear, 3,000 RPM. We're still under 60 miles an hour. We've got the state police keeping an eye on us. I don't think we're in any trouble at this speed here. <laughs> but you really start to appreciate modern cars aerodynamics. I mean, there's quite a bit of wind noise from probably just the side mirrors. And I would assume that people probably pop those off when they're like, oh, I don't want to listen to this. But 
it's not so bad. You're still insulated and it feels like a relatively safe car, not by modern standards, but by 1970s standards, I'm sure this did pretty well in a crash test. Great brakes, ooh, those feel nice. You won't be setting any lap records in the 75 520, that's for sure. Lots of communication through those tires. Oh my goodness, we've got a manual steering rack as well. There's no, there's no assist here. use it every day this is pretty usable but I feel like most people who are gonna buy a 13,000 kilometer you know mint condition e12 they're probably just gonna take it to some car shows maybe do a little bit of touring you've got a monster trunk so I guess you take it and and, and use it at the golf course or something maybe it's just your your runabout in like the summer house or something but I mean honestly it's pretty comfortable on the highway. Like this is blowing my mind how, I mean, I, it shouldn't though. It shouldn't blow my mind. This is a BMW. People drove fast back then and they were driving on, on long expanses of highway. That's what, exactly what this was made for. Funny thing about this car though, nobody notices it. They don't have any nostalgia with it because it wasn't in the United States. So maybe someone who grew up in Europe and either they had one of these when they were younger or their parents drove them around in one in, in Sweden or Germany or somewhere. Maybe that's, maybe that's where this car comes into play in the US where it has like a big nostalgia factor for somebody like that. But I mean, driving around normally, no one's pointing, no one's looking because it just looks like an old BMW, but no one can really pinpoint why it looks different because they didn't experience it. They didn't grow up with it. And they certainly didn't have this posted up over their bedroom. You know, this is just not a poster car. So while I don't have any real sentimentality for this car particularly because I didn't grow up with it and I never knew anybody who had one, it does remind me of the three series that we did have in the 80s that my neighbors had. And I own an E39 M5. So it's kind of the, the older brother, the predecessor of my five series. It's nice to see where it came from. It would make the perfect two car solution though. If you were somebody who owned like a 3.0 CSI, this would be the perfect daily driver and that's your weekend car. Up until now, the oldest five series I had ever driven was the E28. And I think that's probably the case for most people in America. It's, it's hard to go back further than that in this country. We just didn't have them. And this shares a lot of that vibe of the E28 because the E28 had a lot of body roll, but it was really tactile. But the difference between this and an E28 is an E28 actually does feel kind of heavy. This really doesn't feel heavy. I think something that, that makes it feel a little less capable is just the fact that it's got these skinny little tires. And maybe if you upgraded that to something more modern, which I don't know why you would. Part of the charm is driving it as a period correct car. It is pretty cool how long BMW stuck with the manual transmission. I mean, think about the E39 M5. It only came in a stick shift. And I remember even in the late 80s, friends who uh, whose parents bought brand new BMWs, they'd go buy like a, a 328 or a 325 IS and they get it in a manual and their parents would say, you spent all this money and you still have to shift your own gears? Well, you know, <laughs> it was part of the experience and there still were no real great automatic transmissions that could, I don't know where I just got like Wisconsin on you on that automatic, an automatic transmission that it just still wasn't gonna do the trick. It wasn't going to give you the same driving experience. So, you know, it, while Mercedes, most of their cars went automatic, those did not age well. <laughs> the cars look fantastic, but those gearboxes are dogs. So it's really cool to be able to go back and pretty much drive any BMW 
and know that you're gonna have a good experience driving a manual. The shift throws are precise and lovely. I mean, it doesn't feel like an old car. Sometimes you drive vintage manuals and they're very frustrating. You're like, oh, yikes, are these synchros okay? I mean, sometimes you do that in an E36 too. I, don't get me wrong. But I mean, this thing drives like a dream. This is a phenomenal gearbox. Clutch is really tactile and precise. I mean, the only thing in this car that I would say, you know, I don't want to be cruel to it, but you know, there's not a whole lot of power. So you have to plan ahead. Definitely need to be planning ahead. You know, everything grew up to be so large and I find this to just be the right size vehicle. You can, you can find your way in a lane. You can go from the outside of the lane to the inside of the lane in a corner and actually maneuver the car. Matt Farah talks about this with the 992 because there's like basically no opportunity to make a line for yourself. You just have to be following the lane. I really hope this car goes to somebody who's gonna love it and take care of it and drive it. I mean, it has very few miles or kilometers on it right now, but it deserves it. It deserves a life. And while the vibe of this car might scream art teacher, the price says connoisseur collector. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Special thanks to the Bond Group for the opportunity to drive this beautiful Beamer. Don't forget to respect the drive. gotta say I appreciate the visibility out of this thing it's phenomenal it's just all glass that's something that unfortunately for safety reasons most cars have no glass you, you, you have the car up to here and you've you know you've just got this little tiny window around the whole car so you can see but it's not much and older cars I feel like you just always felt like you had you're in that fishbowl I like the fishbowl